Ghost of Tsushima is nothing short of a masterpiece. It's the game that many people have been waiting for years to come. And as much as I fell in love with the gameplay, the combat system and being able to sneak up right behind someone and rip them from their arsehole to their head, the biggest thing that I fell in love with the most was the story itself. The story of not only a war between two cultures, but also the story of the internal conflict that goes on in our character's mind of Jin Sakai. In this video, I'll be using Sun Tzu's and Robert Greene's works to cover the philosophy of Ghost of Tsushima and what we can learn from this absolutely beautiful game to better our own lives. This is Aaron, this is the golden knowledge and this is the philosophy of Ghost of Tsushima. Major spoilers ahead. The story starts out with the Mongol invasion of Tsushima Island, led by the ruthless Koten Khan. With our main protagonist Jin Sakai and his uncle Lord Shimura being samurai, they are committed to defend the island from the Mongol invaders. The Mongol Empire is invading our home. They are brutal. Relentless. Unstoppable. We are 80 samurai against an army fighting to slow the invasion. Today, I die for my people. But right from the beginning, we can clearly see that this is not going to be an easy ride for the samurai. As it turns out, Kolten Khan has spent years studying the samurai code, beliefs and tactics, which is heavily centered around the principles of duty and honor. Armed with this knowledge, the Khan uses and exploits the samurai's beliefs, making him practically unmatched on the battlefield leading to the majority of the samurai being wiped out. But while you were sharpening your sword, do you know how I prepared for today? I learned. I know your language, your traditions, your beliefs, which villages to tame and which to burn. So I'll ask you once again, Samurai, do you surrender? This is what leads our character of Jin Sakai down a path and quest of driving out the Mongols and defeating the Khan, while at the same time questioning the cold that he has been governed by his whole life. After witnessing the massacre of the Samurai, Jin realises that he may have to break away from the Samurai cold and rely on some pretty shady tactics in order to save the people of the island from any further losses. We live by a code of honor and sometimes we die by it. Warriors like my father who just wanted to give us a safer home. I want the same thing but we have to fight back. I promised my uncle I'd never break our code. Then bend it. To save my family. And what's left of yours. These sneaky tactics that Jin relies on leads him to earn the name of the Ghost. 
and after liberating Fort After Fort and driving the Mongols further and further off the island, he eventually slays the Khan and saves the people of Tsushima from the Mongol invasion. Holy fucking shit, that was badass. <laughs> but all this comes at a price. Because Jin used tactics that went against the traditional samurai code, this results to the shogun stripping Jin of his samurai status and orders Lord Shimura to execute him for his actions. The shogun has declared you a traitor. He ordered you to kill me. The ghost was an outlaw. He taught our people to defy their leaders. To defend themselves. With poison. A gift you gave to our enemy. I had to stop you from throwing away our people's lives. You have no honor. And you are a slave to it. I must start a new family. And my head is the cost. Taking it is my punishment. A highly emotional duel occurs between the two. And after grabbing a tissue and wiping the tears off my face, we can see that Jin is left with a very tough choice. Of either delivering death and honour to his uncle in the name of the samurai, or letting him survive and walk away as the ghost. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to be breaking down what I feel was the best choice and what I think the developers of the game were really trying to get at. For generations, our families have lived by a code. Tell me the virtues that guide us. Loyalty to our Lord. Control of our emotions. And... You know this. Honor. To fight bravely and uphold the legacy of Clan Sakai. Those are your father's words. What does honor mean to you? I guess... Protecting people. The ones who can't fight for themselves. You have a good heart. The samurai followed what was known as Bushido, a set of codes of honour and ideals that dictated the samurai way of life. The Bushido code consisted of seven to eight main virtues, and if a samurai warrior was to break any of these virtues, he would bring disgrace and dishonour to his name. And the only way to redeem himself in the eyes of the Bushido code was to perform a ritual suicide known as seppuku, which consisted of stabbing yourself in the stomach and turning the blade upwards in order to create a fatal wound to your death. Yeah, it's some pretty hardcore shit. And the samurai took the Bushido code very seriously. The problem is is that because the samurai followed this code very strictly, it made them very predictable. Now this is fine when everyone adheres to the code, such as civil war between samurai themselves, but when the Mongols invade Tsushima Island, we can see right from the beginning that they are a completely different type of enemy. Outsiders, send your finest warrior to face me. Murder, Jinnida. I am Haru Nobu Adachi, 
descendant of the legendary Yoshinobu Adachi. This is where the Bushido code starts to work against the samurai as the Khan knows how to exploit it. This is a very powerful technique that the Khan uses and is what ultimately gives him the huge upper hand in the invasion of Tsushima. And this is something that you can learn a lot from in regards to business and life. Your whole life for this. And you have won battles that lesser men have called unwinnable, yes? But while you were sharpening your sword, do you know how I prepared for today? I learned. I know your language, your traditions, your beliefs, which villages to tame and which to burn. So I'll ask you once again, Samurai. Do you surrender? If we look at the 13th strategy of war, it states that in war, it is essential for you to know your enemy. When you create a plan of attack, whether that's in life or business, the target of your strategy should be less about the army you face and more of the mind of the man who runs it. If you understand how their mind works, you have the key to deceiving and controlling it. Training yourself to read people and picking up the signals they unconsciously send about themselves, this in itself is a very powerful weapon. By trying to think as your enemies would think, by finding your opponent's psychological weaknesses, you can then go to work to start unhinging their minds. This game of psychological warfare is how the Khan was able to wipe out and manipulate a massive number of people because he understood the way the people think. This is why the Khan keeps Lord Shimura as a prisoner, as by keeping him close allows him to study and understand him a lot more. Lord Shimura. You deserve better than this. Convince your people to stop resisting, and you can walk free. Stop wasting my time. Kill me. Mm, you think you've lost everything. But your nephew is still alive. <laughs> the real enemy in war is your opponent's mind. His army, his resources and his strength can all be overcome if you can find a blind spot through which they do not have covered. Lord Shimura's strict and rigid way of thinking is what plays to the whole island's downfall. But this is something that Jin starts to understand about the art of war. The Mongols are on the defensive. We will strike before they regroup and end this war tomorrow. You sent our men to die. They are soldiers. Their blood is on our hands. I can find a way past the bridge. Poison the enemy. An act of terror. I am trying to save our people by teaching them to fear us. If you 
you continue down this path, you will be no better than the Mongols. I trained you to fight with honor. Honor died on the beach. The Khan deserves to suffer. You are ruled by your emotion. I sacrificed everything I knew to save our people. I gave them hope. You did nothing. <laughs> Armed with the knowledge of knowing that the Khan fully understands the samurai way of thinking, Jin is then ultimately only left with two options. Option number one is to continue waging war against the Khan as a samurai, which proved to already have failed. Or we have option number two, which is to wage war against him as something new. Something known as the Ghost. A character that is formless and unpredictable. And as we know by playing the game, Jin goes on to choose the Ghost. Which in essence highlights the 24th strategy of war. Taking the line of least expectation. People generally expect your behaviour to conform to known patterns and conventions. Your task as a strategist is to upset their expectations by surprising them with chaos and unpredictability. By surprising them with chaos and unpredictability, it detonates like a nuclear bomb in their mind, causing them the utmost panic. By Jin assuming the character of the ghost, this is what takes the Khan by complete surprise and it went completely against what he thought would happen and this strategy alone of Jin adapting to the situation and his enemy is the main reason why Jin Sakai was able to save Tsushima Island. If we work together, we can drive off the remaining Mongols. Start rebuilding our home. That is not your duty. The Shogun has disbanded Clan Sakai. As of today, you are no longer Samurai. I sacrificed everything for my people. And I would do it again. But it raises a question of what expense did it cost Jin in doing so? The Khan knew that what Jin was doing was seen as dishonourable by the samurai cold. So he tries to use that against him by trying to drive a wedge between Lord Shimura and Jin's relationship. I read that samurai follow a path of honour. It is one of the many differences between us. Hmm. Then why have my men found their brothers stabbed in the back? Lord Sakai would never resort to such tactics. War brings out who we truly are. And yes, even though Jin did save the island from Mongol invasion, his whole life flips upside down in the process. Losing everything he initially stood for. Regardless of the morality of the situation, the strict and rigid samurai code is what leads to the heartbreaking duel between master and student, and between uncle and nephew.
on the way with a warrior's death. And after the last final slash, Lord Shimura falls to the ground, where Jin is left towering over him in victory. Jin is then left with the decision to make. Kill his uncle with honour and in the samurai way, or let him live and walk away. Now I know there is a huge debate over which option is the right one, but ultimately, I don't think it's about what choice is right or wrong. I think what it's really about is the fact that Jin has a choice in the first place, which references the 48th law of power, which is assuming formlessness. Throughout the whole game, it seems that we are tasked with only two paths, either doing things the samurai way or doing things the ghost way. I realised that I rarely ever did just play as just the samurai or as just the ghost. It was majorly a mix of the two. There were times where I analysed the situation and come to the conclusion that it was much more wiser to sneak in as the ghost. And I also sometimes, again after analysing the situation, was to just walk through the door and challenge all the Mongol soldiers to the death. By being bounded by just one discipline or just one way of thinking, limited the way I could attack given situations. Yes, granted, the samurai way of life is a beautiful, honourable system. And there is a lot of virtues in Bushido that I strongly agree with. But I also strongly agree with some of the ways the ghost works as well. The samurai viewed the ghost as being dishonourable, whereas I viewed the ghost as just a strategy of unconventional warfare against an unorthodox enemy, which is essentially where ninjutsu stems from, the strategy that gave birth to the ninja, which I really feel will be the premise of Ghost of Tsushima 2, if they was ever to make it. Because I mean, come on, it's hard to top the game as it is, but I feel the only way to top the game would be to literally add in Badass ninjas. <laughs> and this is what relates us back to the point of what choice is better. It's not really about the point of which choice is the right one. It's more about Jin having a choice in the first place. As he is no longer bounded to any system. He can ultimately make the choice for himself. Not having to be forced to do it by any given system. This essentially is what liberates him to do things of his own accord and is what allows him to do what he sees fit given the situation and stay completely unpredictable to his enemies. I think the point that the developers were trying to make is that there isn't just one right or wrong way of doing things. Life itself is very complicated. And I feel that it is just too complex to be lived in just one standard, single-minded way. What may be seen as wrong in one person's eyes can be seen as completely good in another. Exactly like how Jin is ridiculed by the samurai, but loved by the people. And I think what the point is is that no matter what you say or do in life, there is never a simple bog standard way of doing things. There are so many different ideals, strategies and techniques to achieve your goal. And the way to tackle this is just by assuming no form. Exactly like Bruce Lee said, be water. Or ironically, like a ghost. And that's what you need to picture yourself as. I mean, the ghost does use sneaky assassination techniques, 
but he also faces and duels his enemies head on, not limiting himself to just one domain. The ghost is open-minded to various disciplines and assesses each and every situation as they come. I think what the game is trying to teach us is that it is sometimes unwise to just be governed by one system all your life as it's impossible for just one strategy or one system to be perfect. Life has too many grey areas and it's just way too complicated for that. And the way we overcome this is by focusing our minds on studying a variety of disciplines. Whether that's in your career, your business or in your life. Don't be afraid to go out and try new strategies. Don't be afraid to make a change in your life. And that is ultimately what I feel is next for Jin. I'm sure he would definitely will still follow many samurai principles and virtues. Things such as practicing haiku and doing what's best for the people. But what I can see also happening is Jin studying new arts and techniques in order for him to transcend himself into the ultimate ghost. And that is the philosophy of Ghost of Tsushima. Now, if you're still here and you've watched it to the end, I just want to say thank you so much. And I hope you gained some valuable knowledge from this video. And if you want to learn more about this concept of being formless, go and check out the video that I did on Bruce Lee. This type of video is something a bit different to what I usually do. So if you like this video, make sure you let me know by smashing that like button. And comment below if you would like more Ghost of Tsushima or any gaming content in general. Ghost of Tsushima was an absolute masterpiece. So also let me know what your thoughts were about the game and let me know what you would like to see next. This is Aaron, this is The Golden Knowledge and this is me signing off.